Hi, this is Robert at XI Computer. We are looking today at our latest and greatest XI M Tower PCIe workstation based on the fourth generation Intel Core i7 4770K. It's a 22 nanometer, very efficient, very powerful CPU. And we couple that with uh, the NVIDIA Quadro K6000, the most powerful video card from the NVIDIA line. Um, and let's take a look how we build this box. For this build, we, we use a Cooler Master uh, Striker case, and um, it comes in two versions, the white and black that you guys see here, and also full black version. Uh, in addition to that, uh, sometimes we, we have complaints that uh, you guys don't like the, those um, LED lights in the fan, and this case comes with a little button here that can turn them on and off. There's also a button to control the speed of the fan. Uh, but they're also controlled internally by the BIOS according to the temperature of the case. The case has uh, some nice uh, input, uh, two USB 3.0, two USB 2.0 on top, uh, mic uh, input and headset output for audio. And then uh, there is an X dock here for an SSD uh, or swappable drive. We have a multi IO um, interface with uh, for USB 2.0 and two USB 3.0 and an eSATA as a mini docking station there, uh, DVD array write or um, Blu-ray if needed. There are nine five and a quarter bays as we can see here. However, some of them can be uh, turned in and out from the inside. We're going to see in a minute and um, and use it as uh, three and a half bays for internal drives. Uh, let's open the case and see how uh, we built inside. We open the case. First thing we are noticing the uh, motherboard of choice is the ASUS Z87-Pro. Pro stands for professional. The professional version has uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and uh, one gigabit uh, Ethernet network uh, included. Uh, and also, of course, the uh, USB 2.0, 3.0, and eSAT are accessible from the back as well to connect us to the front. Uh, we use a, a Corsair H100i sealed water cooling system and here we can notice the two big pipes that convey the heat up on a radiator that stands between two 12 centimeter fan and the exhaust ventilation grids up on top. This takes all the CPU heat out of the case, helping the uh, other components uh, around surrounding uh, stay cool. Um, on the side here we have a two 8 gigabyte uh, uh, Corsair Vengeance model, modules, 1866 uh, DDR3 RAM uh, for a total of 16 gig. We can go up to 32 gig with this build. And here is the NVIDIA Quadro K6000, uh, most powerful video card from the NVIDIA Quadro line at present, has sporting uh, 12 gigabyte of DDR5 uh, video RAM, 2800 and 80 uh, CUDA cores, computational core, uh, if, you, if you guys want to use that not only as a presentation but as a, as a co-processor for the CPU. Um, there are two connectors for SLI and SDI sync already there pre-built and there's an extra addition here for 3D uh, stereo viewing in case that is required. For the power supply we, uh, we choose our 1000 watt silent pro cooler master is a modular power supply and is uh, quite efficient and uh, uh, quite uh, quite silent per se, as as he says. The modularity of it allows to keep the the um, traffic of the cable at the minimum required. So as you can see here, it's pretty clean and neat uh, the, the way we route the cables behind the panel and then they come up where needed. As we discussed before, the uh, you have six uh, um, um, bays inside that can be turn it inside or outside um, if, you, if you need more opening base uh, outside or you need more hard drives uh, inside, up to a total of six here. And there's also extra base for uh, two and a half inch mini hard drives uh, down at the bottom. And that's about it for this. Here we go at the uh, benchmark session of this, uh, of this video. And you guys can see from the CPU-Z utility, the CPU here is clocked at 4.5 gigahertz. Now, we do not offer a commercial available uh, configuration at 4.5. We wanted to show you, though, that 4.5 is a good, stable headroom 
and uh, we offer a 4.1 and a 4.3 gigahertz uh, version of this build that pretty much, uh, you know, it will be a little less performing by two, three, five percent, but uh, will have adequate stability for every en engineering job or any any task that require professional computational power. Um, and here we go, uh, the spec view, we're on the spec view for uh, version 11 from uh, uh, Standard Performance Evaluation Corporation. And um, the numbers that coming out from this build are, of course, uh, record breaking for some, most of them. Um, and uh, for the configuration of this caliber, the, the cost is around $6,500 right now in the, in the mid 6,000. And I know some of the comments before when we reviewed the old Quadro 6,000 was that the card does cost in effect more than the rest of the build. Um, but that's why this uh, uh, workstation aimed at very high-end graphics capabilities. And you can see here the SolidWorks uh, is a is a you know 94.26 mark, and uh, the Katia is very nice and significant, and uh, so forth and so on. Pro E and um, some of the other builds that are published uh, um, as of uh, um, this month, uh, basically they are system in the eight to ten thousand dollars, and they're all. Uh, behind in performance, of course, they're using Quadro K five thousand or uh, you know six thousand of the old model or or lesser lesser video card. So good performance here. Now we can uh, um, take a look at uh, a different benchmark and let's go to the Catalyst benchmark. Catalyst benchmark is uh, here presented for this unit. A total index of 819, a record breaking number uh, for this date. And um, we also did a little comparison table here about uh, how the graphics performance uh, in, a, in an AutoCAD uh, environment is really matters. And you can see that this K6000, of course, obviously is the top performing per se, especially on the 3D index and, uh, you know, on the 2D pretty much flattens out with the other guys. Um, however, from this, uh, from this chart, we could possibly see that the Quadro K4000 for AutoCAD is probably a good bet. And even the Quadro K2000 is not bad at all. Um, for comparison, it's an interesting test here. We also um, included the uh, difference between the K5000 tested with the core 4770K, the latest uh, fourth generation, and the same com exact configuration, K5000 tested with the 3770K, that's the third generation CPU. Um, There's quite a substantial advantage into the new uh, architecture, and not only uh, in terms of power consumption, ability to clock, that actually is the same, uh, but uh, the fact that they, they redesigned the cache and they uh, include some extra instructions and optimize the uh, number of cycles per clock of execution for, each in, for some of the instructions. So that, that actually boils down to a, an advantage between 660 to 792. So it is a good uh, a double digit uh, increase in performance. Um, the next test that we are going to uh, present is the Cinebench from Maxon Corporation. And of course, a record breaking number here, 115.105 on the, on the OpenGL for this uh, Quadro K6000. And um, again, we did a little bit of a, of a testing on the K5000 with um, the um, 32 nanometer and and the, and the, the third generation, fourth generation CPUs. And again, you can see there is a substantial advantage of this um, fourth generation Core i7 in performance um, versus the previous one. And that is good. So that means something has been done right and uh, justify the upgrade. Um, again, more uh, we can see the um, all the CPU mark here is a 9.8 and uh, that's, you know, pretty much what it is. 
This concludes our uh, test at this point and our presentation. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, for more information about the configuration, the build, and the, the performance number of the benchmark, there are links on, the, on YouTube and as well on our website at xicomputer.com. Thank you very much. Bye.